Today on Judge Faith, a salon owner and his top hairstylist unsuccessfully mix business and pleasure. When he did get his shop open, he was real persistent on having me there because he knows I'm a great stylist. But once we got into the salon, I don't mix business and pleasure for things like this. <laughs> he had a thing for me in the beginning. The plaintiff did? Yes. <laughs> he would. <laughs> Why are y'all so petty about these things? I don't understand. <laughs> My audience is funny. And later, siblings with a history of helping each other out decide to draw a line over an unpaid loan. He said in front of my mom, I probably owe her eight grand. His last comment before that was when he told me, what you gonna do, sue me? She's my sister, I mean. She's my sister is, I don't really have to give her money, right? So why do you keep giving her money? Isn't that the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Darcelon Howard says he had lots of issues with the defendant but the last straw was when she had an altercation with a client. He's suing for unpaid booth rental costs. Defendant Teresa Avila says she owes nothing because Dar Salon ran his salon in an unprofessional way and she paid for the time she was there. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Howard versus Avila. Thank you, Juan. Darcelon Howard? Yes. You were suing the defendant, Teresa Avila? Yes. For $1,500, you say she owes you for unpaid booth rental costs? Yes, ma'am. I understand she was a stylist in your salon for a while. Yes. What dates to what date, sir? Uh, she started March 19th, and it ended on... August 4th. And so you say during that time period, she fell behind on payments she was supposed to be making to you to rent space from you? Yes. Okay, why don't you give me some background? How long have you owned the salon and what kind of salon is it? Uh, I opened up the salon January 17th of this year. Mm -hmm. It's a barber shop and a hair salon. I have six booths for men and two for women. And you rent these booths out on a weekly basis? Yes, uh, they pay every Saturday. They pay uh, 125 for the women, 100 for the men for their first year, their first uh, month is free. So other than their booth space mm -hmm. and the space that you give them, what do you supply for them? Or do they bring all of their own materials? They bring all their own materials. I give them the booth, the chair, mm -hmm. the mats, and the, you know, the space. Okay, now Ms. Avila, give me some background on you. How long have you been a stylist and when do you say you worked for the plaintiff? I worked at Center Stage from March 19th to August 2nd. Um, I've been in the industry for almost about a year. I'm, I'm new to the industry. I just received my license in January. How did you hear about the plaintiff salon? Uh, through a mutual friend. Well, I met him before he had his salon. Through a mutual friend, and he kind of would throw himself at me here and there, little things like that. But anyways, when what he seen- throw, throw himself at you? He, he had a thing for me in the beginning. The plaintiff did? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he, he would- <laughs> <laughs> so petty about these things. I don't understand. <laughs> My audience is funny. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Was there ever a romantic relationship between the two of you? Not no. romantic. Uh, I met her at my house, and I mean, she's cute. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. You liked her? Yeah, she was cute. Okay. So, I mean, we flirted here and there, but once we got into uh, the salon, I don't mix business and pleasure for things like this. So, <laughs> okay. you know, we, we friends. So, like, you okay. never mess with any Fair stylist way. at your... Not before they started it, not started at my job. So, <laughs> it's a free-for-all, but once they rent a booth, then I it's stop. all business. Yes. If I ever now, somebody know, else worked... Saying? Now, there was a girl that worked for me before, that's why she's giggling that we didn't mess around before. If I ever pursued him, he would have he would have taken work. action. If I ever would have let their boundaries, he would have took me in the back where he sleeps and probably does <laughs> <laughs> 
So please tell the truth. All right, so let's talk about the booth. Rachel. Yeah, I'm like let's that. Let's talk about that. Me. So there was never anything romantic between the two of you besides the harmless flirting. But then she starts working there and renting the booth. The rental fee is $125 a week. Mm -hmm. You say there's a source the end of March. There's one month you give free. Yeah, so from March, she started March 19th. So from March 19th to April 19th, so I gave it to her for free. Weeks, Ms. I Ms. Went Avila. Pain. Ms. Avila. That's just crazy. Who in their right mind would start a business with no contract, with letting somebody stay in their booth for 15 weeks, he's saying 15 weeks without paying him a dime? So you don't owe any money? I probably owe him about $700 or $800 because well, I have you paid him any of that? Not as of since he kicked me out because of the altercation I got him with the girl he was lusting So you for. got fired? Basically, he let me go. Why? With, because a girlfriend that he was... She wasn't a girlfriend. They weren't speaking at the time. He hated her guts, blah, blah, blah. What he, was she doing there? I, she came to me to get her hair done. Mm -hmm. It was on a Sunday. I was wrapping up with another client. She came in and said, hey, I want to do something different with my hair. She was telling me that she wants a protective style. So I pulled up an Instagram page of protective styles, and I said, here, you know, to look at while I'm helping my other clients to get a style that you, you know, would be interested in getting. She picked out a style was faux dread. So I sent her to the store to get the hair because I was happened? working at this time. Did she not, Was she not satisfied with the style? She was not satisfied because she works in a professional setting. So she was already, like... She got faux dreads, and she complained to you? What, what happened was I connected her with... She asked me to... Could my stylist do... Uh, Why did you fire her? Because she started a fight with the girl in the middle of the The girl uh, called salon. me a and what? he just let and her... What, and what did you say in response to that? I blacked out. I don't remember, but I turned around. You don't remember? I turned around to, to confront her, and he grabbed me and pushed me out of the salon. You don't remember? Because you said in your papers you cursed her out. Maybe I might have cursed, but not like... I didn't call her a she called me. Uh -huh. my and so you cursed and said what to her? I said, she that's what you're not going to do. I said, do don't, I said, don't disrespect me. I did not say that. What, you what do you mean? She, she won't answer. Okay. She, she won't answer. What did she say? She, the girl came in to get her hair did. She messed he up her hair. Right. Probably lie. Right. She messed up her hair. The girl complained. They made a situation for her to redo the hair the next day. Like she said, I knew the girl, so she came early, and she was at her other job. She has a part-time job also. Which is fine, but it wasn't professional to do it like that. Then after the we girl told talk her, about professional, you the sleep girl... in the in the vicinity. In have the a seat, ma'am. Have a seat. Have That's a seat. Crazy. Have a seat. You're smiling and you're laughing. He fired you. We're he's talking lying. about why you get fired. Look on his you don't have any respect lies. for authority. And if you're acting like this in court, I can only imagine what you acted like in that salon. Coming up. An argument in the hair salon gets heated. She said, I don't have a problem to slap you in your face and sit you down and do your hair. Anybody who, who rents out any space as a business person will have a contract. Am I wrong? You are wrong, and I'm going to tell you why. And later, a sister comes to court to collect from her brother. Who's Dolores, your mother? Yep, our mother. She wrote a letter to the court. Saying how I was stupid and he was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Plaintiff Darcelon Howard says he had no choice but to ask Teresa to leave a salon. He's suing for unpaid booth rental costs. Defendant Teresa Avila says she owes nothing because Darcelon ran a salon in an unprofessional way. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so I connected with her. They made an arrangement to redo the hair. The girl came to get her hair did, and she told her she couldn't make it to the appointment because she didn't have a babysitter. So I told the girl that if she didn't want to get her hair did again, to just ask for her money back. She asked her, and then she showed, Teresa showed up to the salon five minutes after she told her she couldn't. I live when right she around show, the corner. So what happened when she when showed, up, she at showed the up to the salon? They talked. She basically asked for her money back, told her she didn't want the hair done. She told her she wouldn't give her the money back. She doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. You could see that they were both getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. And and even when she started the fight with her, I didn't fire her right then. Mm -hmm. I actually took her outside, told her to calm down that that wasn't professional, to let it go. Oh, and she just wasn't enjoy acting your in a professional Excuse manner. Me, That's shocking. Excuse yeah. me, ma'am. And I told her to go enjoy the day. Did the lady call her the B word? Yes. What was her response to that? What did she say? When in as soon as the girl said called her, she was walking back towards her. So the girl called her, and she said, "I got your." And then she started arguing with her, and she said, I don't have a problem to slap you in your face and sit you down and do your hair. Miss Avila said that. Yes. Okay. Miss Avila, step up, please. 
You say you owe $700. Why haven't you paid that? We've never signed documents. And he, anybody who, who rents out any space as a business person will have a contract. Am I wrong? I don't understand. Would you okay, miss... You are wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, and I learned this early on when I was in college working at a bakery in a grocery store. The manager in my store hammered one thing to us as workers dealing with customers and customer service. He told us repeatedly, the customer is always right. And even when they were mm -hmm. wrong, we never got down on their level mm -hmm. because we work in the customer service yeah. industry. Yeah. And so you say, well, we didn't have a written contract. Oral contracts are just as enforceable mm -hmm. under the law as a written contract. Mm -hmm. And you say that you stopped paying him because he wasn't a professional, That's not but why you were it's there not. using That's the space, using the booth. You've already admitted that you owe him at least seven or eight hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. You weren't there for that long. And for you, in order for you to prove a case, when you come into court, you want to tell me she owes fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. in, in back booth rent. This is your lawsuit. Has she not admitted today? that she owes seven or eight hundred dollars? Yeah. How are you going to prove what she did or did not pay? What kind of records do you keep? When you have stylists who are renting from you on a weekly basis, you have to keep records of who's paying you what and when. Because if you ever have to take them to court, you want to be able to come to court and say, these are my business records. This is how I keep a log and keep track of when people pay me. These are the copies of the receipts that I give them for these payments, yeah. okay? But what you do have are text messages between the two of you. Yeah. Where you admit to owing him eleven hundred dollars. I didn't as of eleven prior to you when, leaving when in August. When yeah. he texted me that, I, I immediately called him, and we even had a dispute then because I said I don't feel in my heart I owe you eleven hundred. Here's what we're this gonna is... do. I'm gonna stop you right there because in the text messages, he you ask how much is your back booth rent. He tells you eleven hundred dollars. <laughs> you say how do you figure, and then your next text message is I apologize. I'll start paying on it ASAP, and that's exactly what you're going to do. Eleven hundred dollars. <laughs> for the plaintiff. Star Salon, I just, my best wishes. I hope he's learned a valid lesson that documentation does matter and he should start having contracts and be a little bit more business savvy. Good luck with the industry and I'm just glad to have us behind us. Plaintiff Michelle Culpepper says her brother borrowed money from her for several years to pay for rent, clubbing, and women, but now is refusing to pay her back. She's suing for unpaid loans. Defendant Paul Culpepper says he doesn't owe because his sister borrowed money from him too, and that's what family does for each other. Michelle Culpepper? Yes. You were suing your brother, Paul Culpepper, yes. for $4,850 you say he owes you for various loans over the course of several years? Yes. Okay, why don't we start from the beginning? Tell me how you ended up in court today. Well, it started, I guess, when I was born, because I got it drilled <laughs> in my head that this is my only full-blood brother and we're supposed to be all we have. Mm -hmm. Like, it is supposed to be about him looking out for me. And through all my younger years, he was my protector. My brother was my everything. I want to be like him. I played full contact football because of him. I wanted to be like my brother. I was a tomboy, everything. How would you describe your relationship with your sister? Oh, great. All the time we grew up, we were very close. You know, we always, we were always together. I looked out for her just like she looked out for me. All right. And so what ends up happening, though? You say it over the course of sev several years that things have been difficult between the two of you because of money. Yeah, um, I was working two jobs, and I had a lot of luck with gambling. A so, lot of luck with gambling? Yeah, like a lot of luck with gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, hear that too often. People have luck with gambling. How much did oh, you win? Oh, it's gone now. But at that time, I was on fire. <laughs> OK. And, um, and I don't like banks, so I had a shoebox with a lot of money. So how much would you say you won from playing bingo and poker? Roughly, I was winning anywhere from a grand to four a week. So what ends up happening? You say that your brother borrowed from you. Mm hmm And mm -hmm. for the first couple of years, well, for the first year, I was fine with it. The first year, he probably borrowed, you know, probably 1500 2000 in the first year. To, Why were you and... borrowing money from her? I just needed help with different stuff, and we were loaning it back and forth at the time. How much do you say you loaned her over the course of the years? I, I didn't keep track. We, we family, so I didn't keep track. I didn't make her sign a note. I didn't do any of that. Uh 
because we family. I'm not, I'm not gonna go to her and be like. Did you sign an IOU, a promissory note? Oh yeah, I did. And why would I you? Why did you do that? Because she, that was the only way I could get it. <laughs> I mean, she she said I had so to sign. So why, why do you feel note. that you don't owe if you signed a promissory? No, note? I didn't say I didn't know. <laughs> I, just, I, I just said that she's my sister. I mean, that's we go back oh, and I'm forth. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me clarify, Paul. Talk we go you. back and forth. She's my sister. Is I don't really have to give her money, right? That's that's. <laughs> He has his own language that I can clarify for you, because you got to really know him <laughs> no, to get no. it. Well, what, what happened when you told him you were thinking about taking him to court? His last comment before that was on Thursday when he told me, what you going to do, sue me? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith, was the loan a family favor or an obligation to pay? This is supposed to be from the womb to the tomb. I still do stuff for her anyway. Plaintiff Michelle Culpepper says Paul just laughed when she asked for her money back. She's suing for unpaid loans. Defendant Paul Culpepper says he doesn't owe because Michelle's his sister, and that's what family does for each other. Where do you live now? Uh, at my parents' house. Yeah, both of us had to move back to our parents' house. Okay. At well, different times. What I came was back your last year. I uh, blew my knee out and I need a knee replacement. I couldn't work on my feet anymore. Okay. I couldn't even work sitting down anymore. It was getting too bad. So. Okay. I had to go through the process of trying to get knee surgery, so I moved back home a couple years back. Why, why did you move back? Going through a divorce. How long have you been married? Uh, two and a half years. Why are you laughing? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that funny that he's going through a divorce? No, it's it's funny that that <laughs> it's just funny. I don't like. I'm just the wondering, heifer, like, why so, you yeah, haven't paid funny. any? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna be real. I don't like the heifer, so it's hilarious. But that's. <laughs> <you know. laughs> If he would have listened to me, he wouldn't have got married. But if he would have listened to me, I'd have my money back. So I guess that's a moot point. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'm just trying to figure out here, um, you know, so you're you're getting a divorce. You were only married two and a half years. What, is she staying in the in the home the two mm -hmm. of you had? Okay. I mean, you haven't really given me a reason as to why you haven't been paying any of this money back. And the weird thing is, he admits what made me file when he said, what are you gonna do, sue me? He said, hell, I probably owe well, you eight grand. But here's my issue with you, Miss Culpepper. I know, I Because, was <laughs> you know, you have someone who you say will ask you for money repeatedly and doesn't pay it back, so why do you keep giving them money? Isn't that the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result? It is, and I'm a, I got three reasons for my stupidity, because I will admit it was my stupidity. One, like he always says, I'm his sister, that is my brother, and I just couldn't see myself like, oh, I'm all high on the hog and doing good, and my car is great, and my house is great, and damn, my brother can't put gas in his car. Oh, my brother don't have his smud money. And I still had it in my mind that it's us against the world. It, me and this him are the, the only two. Photo. Oh, this is Jesus. Is, oh, wow. This is so cute. Wow. This is so cute. Wow. This is so cute. I hate to see that you guys are here in court today. This is adorable. Well, the too crazy thing is, I, I still had it in my head that, like, we're the only I mean, two. I, this is supposed to be from the womb to I the tomb. I still do stuff for her anyway. Yeah. I mean, Every I, day. I, if she needs to move, she needs to do any of that. And physically, I'm there and no, no, I don't charge, I don't yeah. do any of but that. But physically, I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't get through a week without my brother's help. I'm not gonna lie about that. But this came down to the principal because he actually, like, he laughed and then he's like... Who's Dolores, your mother? Yep, our mother. She wrote a, a letter to the court? Saying how I was stupid and he was dumb. <laughs> she wrote... <laughs> but... <laughs> but... She said that, but she also said we're grown and he needs to pay back what he knows he owes. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Here's the issue, because um, if you were going to do this, you should have done it a lot sooner. Here's what, yeah. based on the statute of limitations, which means what you can claim that hasn't expired because, you know, mm. you have stuff that's dating back here to 2005. The law doesn't allow you to go back and sue people for personal loans okay. back that far. But based on what you submitted in court today and, sir, your acknowledgement of the fact that you signed th <laughs> yeah. this, these IOUs that you owe her money, you do owe her for under the law, $1,200, and you have to pay that money back to her. So judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,200. Good luck to both of you. Okay. Right. <laughs> Hopefully my brother just realizes not to treat me like I'm his personal sucker, kind of like, just because it's mine doesn't mean it's necessarily his. 
I still love her. I should have paid her a long time ago. And we wouldn't have to be here. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.